The Nikon Coolpix P7000 belongs to a very obscure genre of cameras that specialize in advanced external controls, power-packed features, and imagers that are larger than any other fixed lens on the market. The P7000 is the peanut butter to a Nikon D700's jelly. This is the ultimate companion for a professional who wants a quick shot and doesn't want to mess around with interchangeable lenses. It's a great option for a student and any adventurer who wants a camera that pretty much packs in a whole Whitman sampler of features. Now the Nikon Coolpix P7000's main and pretty much only competition is the Canon PowerShot G12. From the outset, both of these cameras look almost identical from about three feet away. But let's start with the design and see where they differ. What we like about the Nikon Coolpix P7000 is that it oozes with retro aesthetics. The design features a raised hump that encloses an optical viewfinder, there's a pop-up flash, and there's a whole menu of dials and controls on the P7000. We've got a rear command dial that helps us select aperture or shutter speed. There's a rear circular dial, and we also have a quick menu button on the P7000. There are also little covert buttons like aperture value and TV value. There's a function button for toggling zoom settings. And there's also an auto exposure and auto focus lock. Also in back, we're treated to a 921,000 pixel three inch LCD, which gave an excellent performance. On top, we have a hot shoe for flash or accessory. And a great thing about the P7000 is the fact that it has a 3.5 millimeter mic jack for video mode, which the G12 doesn't have. We have a nice big battery located underneath the camera, and it supports SD, SDHC, or SDXC cards. There's a removable ring around the lens that allows you to fit a wider teleconversion lens on. Now compared to the G12, the P7000 lacks the fold-out LCD. Also, we like the G12's placement of the command dial in front. Both cameras have exposure compensation dials, but one feature we missed on the P7000 was the ISO dial, which we had on the G12 and just could not live without after shooting with it. So all in all, both cameras are very similar. The P7000 is more of a DSLR kind of feel, while the G12 is more of a user-friendly welcoming, ease of use, specialized kind of feel. Now that same DSLR feel we got with the P7000's design migrates into shooting features as well. His camera is packed to the brim. It has an ISO range of 100 to 3200 with customizable ISO caps and a high ISO range. It has a full white balance suite that lets you customize Kelvin down to the degree. There's active D lighting for a boost in dynamic range, which works and we tested. There's also a built in neutral density filter on this camera, just like on the G12. Autofocus worked great and manual focus was better because of the high resolution on the screen. And we got three different customizable user modes so we could save our settings and apply them in any environment. In manual mode, shutter speed is excellent. It goes down to 60 seconds. The aperture range is very similar to the G12. It's 2.8 to 8.0. But there's one caveat about this camera that you should know that was kind of a deal breaker for us. And since we do a lot of long exposure shooting, it really kind of um, threw a fork in the microwave. At ISO 800 and up, you have a shutter speed cap that you can't exceed. So for instance, at ISO 3200, you can only shoot at a max half second shutter speed. You can't go any slower. Also, this camera lacks in the scene department. It really doesn't have as many uh, fun color filters um, that you find on the PowerShot G12. Now the Nikon Coolpix P7000 has a 7.1x optical zoom, which is bigger than the G12's 5x optical zoom. And the good thing about this camera is that you can zoom in video mode. You can't do that with the G12, so that's a, that's a big thing. We get a digital level meter, accurate histogram, and a grid for shooting. Compared to the G12, we sided with the G12 because we experience better menu navigation 
the P7000 is a little sluggish, especially in playback when you zoom in and out. So we liked Canon's menu system a lot better. Things were a lot easier to access and get to. But the P7000 is just stocked with uh, tons of advanced features. It makes you feel like you're shooting with a little DSLR. In the image quality ring, it was such a tight fight between the Canon PowerShot G12 and the Nikon P7000. Both cameras exhibited beautiful imaging performances in natural light. Uh, and we noticed that P7000's colors were warmer and a little more accurate than the G12's. Now an interesting thing about the P7000 is that its raw performance is equivalent to its JPEG performance, which is odd because the PowerShot G12's raw performance is a definite improvement from its JPEG performance. The P7000's low light sensitivity is excellent, especially when you shoot at higher ISOs. This camera is very forgiving and manages noise superbly. So image performance between both cameras is such a tight race. They both have 10 megapixel, one over 1.7 inch sensors. So we're sure that that has something to do with it. But we would recommend either camera when it comes to image quality, it was that close. Now video quality is a definitely a different story. Um, we love the fact that we could zoom in video mode, but our options in video mode, our controls were severely limited. We had a wind cut and uh, autofocus settings, that's it. That's all we had with the P7000. And this camera's auto exposure in video mode just goes haywire. It um, gets very bright and then it takes a long time to settle into a decent exposure and if you move the camera it does the same thing. So we went with the G12 on in video mode as far as video features and image quality. Low light's still not, as, not bad with the P7000 in video mode but the G12 definitely has it beat. Two cameras diverged in a wood. Which camera is the less traveled by? Bright light, natural image quality is fantastic. Low light performance is great. Although we cannot shoot at lower shutter speeds at high ISOs with the P7000. That's a big strike for us. The P7000 has a better LCD screen, but it doesn't fold out like the G12s. The G12 has an excellent ISO dial while the P7000 is loaded with little tricks and shortcuts like the function button, AE, AF, AF lock, and the TV button, the quick menu dial. Both cameras have hot shoes. Both cameras have the ability to throw on a tele or um, wide angle conversion lens. They both have optical viewfinders. Both run on the same memory cards, have large batteries, good battery life. So it's really down to brand loyalty and it's also down to personal preference. We gave the slight edge to the PowerShot G12. It was just an all around excellent experience from menus to features to image quality to the final product. The P7000 is an excellent camera too. If you're used to shooting with Nikons, you'll probably want the P7000. But our biggest concern with the P7000 was that shutter speed cap when dealing with ISO levels. So think about it. Oh, one last thing. Flash performance is a lot better on the P7000 and the uh, flash options are a lot more extensive than the G12. So that's another thing to consider. But aside from that, that pretty much narrows it down. These cameras are so darn close. Go out, try them out. Uh, ask us some questions. Go to our full review for all of the samples on the P7000. Until next time, I'm Mike Perlman for InfoSync World.